Hello and welcome to Multiframe Webinar 2 Video 6 on Working with Properties. Our final member property we're going to look at is Member Offsets. By default when we draw a member in Multiframe the neutral axis of the section is aligned with the center line of the member we draw. The Member Offsets command allows us to offset that section away from the original neutral axis so it actually moves the neutral axis away from the center line of the member we've drawn. This is useful for a number of situations. If we want to align the top of steel between different size members and take into account the secondary effects of the interaction between the axial forces in the secondary member and the primary member. If we're attaching members to plates, it's absolutely essential that we use the member offset command. In this kind of situation where we have a T section stiffening a plate, it's very important to use member offsets to offset the T section. And finally, if we have large columns and we have beams between those columns, then we can use a member offset at each end in the axial direction to account for the reduced length of the beam. So let's take a look at how this works in multiframe. One situation is with the roof rafters that we saw earlier and the purlins between them. We can see that uh, with our purlins, they're rotated around, but they're not offset to the top of the rafters. So we can select those purlins and we can choose member offsets. Notice that there are two options for uh, offsetting in the global or local axes. Because these purlins are rotated, we should use the local axis. And then the distance that we need to offset the purlin is the half height of the rafter plus the half depth of the purlin. So our rafter is 310, so that's uh, 155 plus the 100 of our rafter, so 255 is the distance that we need to offset them in the local coordinate system. And that will sit our purlins on top of our rafter. Another situation would be in a different part of this frame a primary beam and a secondary beam here. You can see originally they pass through the neutral axes that are aligned to pass through each other. So I can select my secondary beam here which is a 200 connecting to a 460. So if I want to align top of steel in that case I need to offset by the distance between the half heights of those two. So that's 230 minus 100, which is 130. Choose member offsets, specify 130. Because the member's horizontal, I can just use uh, global coordinates. That makes it easy. And that aligns my top of steel between the two. In the case of plates, uh, if we go and take a look at our plates in our model, I might just hide these edge beams to make it easier to see. So I'll use the masking command and hide them. And we can see that we've got our plate fields here and then attached to the plate fields we've got a couple of stiffening T-beams. So by default you can see their neutral axis is aligned with the neutral axis of the plate and clearly that's not correct. So we need to offset these two stiffeners uh, by the distance from the base of the web down to the neutral axis. Now I happen to know that in this case that's uh, 260 and it's going to be in the negative direction. It's going to be going downwards, not upwards like the other ones. So I'll put in a negative 260 and uh, that will orientate the base of the web of the T to align with the plate. So that will give us the correct stiffness response because it offsets the flange away from the plate, which is what causes that stiffened plate structure to have its strength. And then finally, if we go over to our columns here, um, we'll consider a situation where we have some very large columns, so I'm going to make them 600 deep columns. And then in between our columns we have uh, a beam. So that our beam runs from center line to center line, but in fact uh, because there's a significant depth at each end we only want it to run from flange to flange. And so in this case when we use the member offsets we can uh, as well as offsetting it vertically to a line top of steel, we can offset it axially. So we can offset by the half depth of the column in each case, plus and minus at the left and right hand end respectively, to shorten the member uh, back to the face of the columns. So that completes our summary of using member offsets in a range of different situations in our frame. Thank you for watching.